Good morning. Welcome to the first lecture of Composition 1. In this lecture we will start with the first chapter. Chapter 1, Education and Student Life. In this chapter we will, sp we will speak about all the points or topics related to education and student life. In fact, we will have a large number of topics such as speaking about universities, campus, uh, colleges, schools. We will also speak about studying abroad and uh, we will speak about the advantages of small colleges and the advantages of large colleges. In the first st slide, we will start with part one, before you write. Uh, there are many steps that you have to follow before you start writing. Step number one is choosing a topic. So choose the topic you want to write about. In every, every time you want to write a paragraph or a composition, you have to choose the topic. For example, in this chapter, by the end of the chapter, you will be asked to write a composition on, or a paragraph on one of the following top topics. The advantages of a large college, or the advantages of a small college. Point number two is brainstorming. Brainstorming here, uh, in brainstor by brainstorming we mean writing down the ideas that come to your mind. You have to write the ideas uh, that come to your mind on that topic. You write them at random and spontaneously. All the ideas that, you, that come to your mind on that topic. Uh, in, this, in the same thing, in the same point of brainstorming, the ideas should be related to the topic you chose. So when we start writing our ideas on the sheet of paper, our ideas should be related to the topic we chose. For example, if we chose the topic, the advantages of a large college, we have to write only about the advantages of a large college. The third step uh, in before you write is organizing ideas in order of importance. After you jot, do jot down your ideas on a sheet of paper, at random and spontaneously, you have to organize them in order of importance. One way of doing this is to write about the most important ideas first, then write about the less important ones. So here we start with the most important ideas in our paragraph, and then we move to the less important ones. The fourth step in before you write is writing the topic sentence. Uh, in fact, the topic sentence is an important part of the paragraph because the topic sentence tells the reader the main idea and the general idea of the paragraph. Okay? And also the topic sentence will uh, contain the controlling ideas which will uh, help the writer, uh, the writer be relevant to the topic, or the ideas be relevant to the topic and related to the topic. So, point number one, the topic sentence tells the reader the main idea of the paragraph. So, when you write it, the reader will know what you are going to speak about or, or what, you, what you are going to write about. One point here I, sh I want to tell you is that the topic sentence is a sentence. So it should be a complete sentence with, a, f with the, uh, a capital letter at the beginning and a full stop at the end. You should write a complete sentence. If the sentence is not complete, then we don't consider it a topic sentence. Point number two, it usually comes at the beginning of the paragraph, our topic sentence usually come, uh, comes at the beginning of a paragraph, as, but sometimes it comes the, as the second sentence or it comes at the end of the paragraph. The, the point number three, a good topic sentence shouldn't be too specific. Your topic sentence shouldn't be too specific because it needs to relate to all the ideas in the paragraph. So your uh, topic sentence shouldn't be too specific because if, you, if it is so, you cannot write about all the points you want to mention in the paragraph. Also, your topic sentence should be, shouldn't be too general 
because if it is too general you will not limit you will not be able to limit yourself to the points you want to write about okay you will always have uh, new ideas to write about point number four in an opinion paragraph a good topic sentence should clearly state your opinion so here if you are writing an opinion paragraph you should clearly state your opinion from the beginning from the topic sentence you will say you, you will tell the reader your opinion from the beginning so that all your supporting ideas and all your examples will support your opinion we will move now to the next slide which is in fact an exercise it is an exercise in the book it's in part one uh, open your books on page five it's the building vocabulary part building vocabulary part using a vocabulary chart this is a chart in which we have some nouns some verbs and some adjectives that are important and uh, beneficial to you during this uh, chapter or in this chapter so you may use these words when you write your paragraphs or when you write sentences about uh, the this chapter okay now we start with the nouns we will explain all the nouns to you the first noun is advantage which means a good thing or a positive thing the second noun is attendance Attendance means being present in or uh, going to. The third noun is the campus. The campus is all the buildings uh, which are inside the university. Okay. And then we have disadvantages. Disadvantages is the opposite of advantage. Or disadvantage is the opposite of advantage. It means a bad thing or a negative thing. The next noun is facility facility uh, it's uh, all the services facility means a service uh, given by uh, the university or by an institution the surface uh, when we speak about services we can mention the library the laboratory the gym okay next we have faculty faculty means teachers the teachers we, who teach in a university next we have the noun location Location is the place where, uh, where a building is. For example, the location of King Faisal University is in Hafouf. Okay? Next we have preference. Preference is uh, things that we like best. Okay? Things that we like best. The next word or noun is prestige. Prestige means good reputation. Good reputation. And we move to the next uh, noun, which is scholarship. Scholarship is uh, an award or money granted for good students to continue their studies. The next noun is student body. Student body is an organization of students who are doing an activity together. Uh, the last noun is tuition. Tuition here means... Uh, um, money or uh, money paid for classes or the cost of college classes we move now to the verbs we have here a list of verbs you have two verbs here uh, the first verb is attend attend is the verb its noun is attendance uh, attend means go to the second verb is prefer prefer means uh, I like best for example I prefer swimming to Football means I like swimming better than football. Uh, next, we have list, a list of adjectives that may be helpful to you uh, when you write your paragraphs. The first adjective is advantages. Advantages is the adjective from the noun advantage. It means giving good things or beneficial. The second adjective is challenging. Challenging. Uh, means uh, um, requiring a lot of effort from you requiring hard work and more effort from you the next adjective is diverse diverse means of different kinds of different kinds the next adjective is a huge what does uh, the word a huge mean it means uh, it means uh, 
uh, very large, okay, or very big. Um, next, we have impersonal. Impersonal means not friendly, not friendly, unfriendly. Uh, and the, the last adjective is prestigious. Prestigious means uh, having a good reputation, having a good reputation. Uh, the next point is, uh, or exercise four is matching words to their definitions. Matching words to their definitions. It's on page five. We will look at the words here and then try to find the definition of uh, the word which has the same meaning as the definition. We start with number one, Liho, a good thing. A good thing means advantage. A good thing means advantage. The second definition is the cost of college classes. The cost of college classes. I think the word that means the cost of college classes is tuition. So here, tuition is the word or the noun that means the cost of college classes. Next, we have very large. Very large. What is the adjective that means very large? It's huge. Huge is the adjective that means very large. Number four, a good reputation a good reputation. The word or the noun that means a good reputation is prestige. So prestige is the noun that means a good reputation. Next we have teachers. Teachers, number five, teachers. The word faculty means teachers. The word faculty means teachers. We move now to number six, a building, a laboratory, a library. Okay? When we say a building or a laboratory or a library, we mean facility. Good. So facility. Uh, the seventh word or the seventh definition is go to. Go to is a verb. It's a verb. From the list of verbs, we should find the verb that means the same as go to. It's attend. Attend. Attend means go to. We move now to number eight. Having many different kinds. Having many different kinds. Uh, we need an adjective here, an adjective here. It's diverse. Diverse. Diverse means having many different kinds. Uh, number nine, not friendly, not friendly. From the chart, if we look at the chart, we will find the adjective impersonal, meaning not friendly, impersonal. Impersonal here means not friendly. And the last definition, number 10, is a bad thing. A bad thing, if you guess, it's disadvantage. It's disadvantage. It's disadvantage. It's exactly the opposite of advantage. This is our exercise. In the next slide, I will let you see the exercise corrected. Let's go to the next slide, and we will see the exercise co corrected. So building vocabulary exercise for page five. A good thing, advantage, to the cost of college classes tuition, Three, very large, huge. Four, a good reputation, prestige. Five, teachers, faculty. Six, a building, a laboratory, uh, a library, uh, facility. Seven, go to, attend. 
8. Having many different kinds, diverse. 9. Not friendly, impersonal. 10. A bad thing, disadvantage. Good. We move now to the next slide, which is exercise 5, exercise 5, page 6. Here we will be looking at the topic you will uh, write about, discussing advantages, and we have two topics, advantages of a large college and advantages of a small college. Let's look at the first uh, topic, advantages of a large college. Can you mention some of the advantages of a large college? Okay, good. Uh, more facilities is one of the advantages of a large college. So here we can say more facilities. If we say a large college, we mean more facilities in it. Um, a next advantage can be um, a high quality of teaching. High quality of teaching also an advantage of a large college. High quality of teaching is an advantage of a large college. What is also an advantage of a large college? Okay, let's think about another advantage of a large college. Let's say more international students and more cultural interchange. So here, in the, um, in the advantages of a large college, we can say that there are more international students. is also an advantage as uh, the students will interchange the cultures and they will learn from each other. Let's move to the second topic which is the advantages of a small college. What are some advantages of a small college? One of the advantages of a small college is that uh, students can um, contact teachers easily. Okay, so students can contact teachers easily. Okay, this is one uh, advantage. Another advantage is that uh, students can make friendships easily also as the number of students is a small number so students can make friendships easily. So students can make friendships easily. And then another advantage of a small college is that the building is not very large so you can navigate easily. Okay? So here you can move easily. Yeah? So it's easy to move from one building to another or for, from one classroom to another okay, in, a, in a small college. Good. We will have all the uh, our three advantages for each of these topics in the next slide, okay? So in the next slide we will have three advantages for each of the following topics. This is the correction for you. So advantages of a large college. Uh, number one, it offers degrees in about every academic field. This is one uh, good point for large colleges. Uh, point number two, there are more facilities. There are more fa facilities such as libraries, laboratories, buildings. Number three, they offer a high quality of teaching. 
they offer a high quality of teaching. We move now to the advantages of a small college. Uh, the first advantage is that students get along with one another easily. Students get along with one another easily as the number of students is not very large so they can get along uh, with uh, one another easily and they can make friendships easily also. Number two, students have a permanent access to professors. Students can always or uh, most of the time uh, find the professors and ask them about the course or ask them about uh, their subjects. Number three, uh, or the advantage number three is uh, that it is easy to navigate. It is easy to navigate to move inside the building in a small college. Good. We move now to the next slide. Uh, the next slide is exercise 10, page 8. Exercise 10, page 8. If you open your book on page 8, you will find this exercise, which is choosing the best topic sentence. Choosing the best topic sentence. In fact, in this exercise, we will have five uh, topic sentences and we are going to uh, five sentences and we are going to see which one can be a good topic sentence for us we start with the first sentence uh, which is students who study abroad often can't speak the language well what do you think is this a good topic sentence or not well, I don't, th I don't think that this is a good topic sentence because here we have an overgeneralization. Overgeneralization. Uh, he spoke about, the writer here spoke about all the students who study abroad and he said that they can't speak the language well. The second point that makes this not a good topic sentence is that it is not logic that students who study abroad can't speak the language well. We move to the second one. Second one says, studying abroad has three main advantages. Studying abroad has three main advantages. What do you think? Uh, well, I think this is a good topic sentence as it uh, limits the topic into studying abroad and it has a controlling idea which is three main advantages in this topic sentence we have a controlling idea it will control the writer and it will tell him what he will write about exactly so number two is a good topic sentence number three I believe this for several reasons well uh, this is not a good topic sentence because uh, here he says I believe this he doesn't tell the reader what does he believe exactly Okay, and the sentence is not complete. We cannot uh, consider this as a complete sentence because he didn't tell us what he believes. Uh, so number three is not a good topic sentence. Number four, there are many good schools in, a f in foreign countries. There are many uh, good schools in foreign countries. Uh, this is a good topic sentence as uh, the writer gives the controlling idea or gives the main idea of the paragraph and also gives a controlling idea and here many good schools many good schools he will speak about the good schools where in foreign countries we move well number four is a good topic sentence number five it says, if possible, all college students should spend some time studying in a foreign country. Uh, well, this is not a, a good topic sentence because it has a, an overgeneralization and it asks all uh, college students to uh, study in a foreign country, which is not possible, okay? So this is not a good topic sentence. You will have here the exercise corrected the exercise corrected here we said that uh, studying uh, students who study abroad often can't speak the language well this is not a good topic sentence 
Number two, studying abroad has three main advantages. It's a good topic sentence. And we said that three main advantages is the controlling idea. Is the controlling idea. And here I would like to tell you that the, uh, the, the fact of um, the fact of the existence of a controlling idea makes the topic sentence a good one as the, write, as the writer, as it makes the writer um, conscious of what he is going to write about, okay? So here, three main advantages is the controlling idea. Number three, I believe this for several reasons. We said that this is not a good topic sentence. Number four, there are many good schools in, a, in foreign countries. This is a good topic sentence. And here the controlling idea is many good schools. The writer here is going to uh, show uh, the reader um, how those schools are good in the foreign country and in what way those uh, schools are good. So this is a controlling idea. Okay. The last topic sentence is, if possible, all college students should spend some time studying in a foreign country. Um, we said that this is not a good topic sentence, as it starts with if possible, which is not a good start for a topic sentence. And also, it has another generalization. When we say all college students, this is another generalization. Our generalization means they generalize this to all the students, which is not possible. If we say some college students, it will be better uh, than if we say all college students, because that's not possible, okay? So, um, knowing the best topic sentence is very important in our course. Uh, also, knowing the controlling ideas is, an, is important also in this uh, course. So our students should always, uh, should, always be, should be able to know which is a good topic sentence and which is not. And they should also be able to identify the controlling ideas in topic sentences. This is an important part of the exam. In the exam, you will be asked uh, you will be uh, given uh, four sentences, sentence A, B, C, and D, and you will be asked to identify or to choose the best topic sentence. Also, you'll, you will be given a topic sentence, and you will be asked to find the part which has the controlling idea in the topic sentence. So this is a very important point in our course and in the exam. Um, we will finish this uh, topic today, or we will finish this le lecture today uh, by giving you an exercise. Uh, your exercise will be exercise 11, page 8. Exercise 11, page 8. Um, it's uh, a homework in which you will be asked to write a topic sentence for the topic you chose. In fact, the first step was choosing the topic and I asked you to choose between uh, the advantages of a large college or the advantages of a small college. And now I, w I am asking you to write your topic sentence uh, for the topic you chose. This is your homework for next time. Uh, thank you very much and see you next time.